And welcome into week eight of the final drive. After this week, there is only one week remaining in the regular season. How did we get here so fast? And then the road to Camp Randall begins. It's hard to believe we're already here. This is the time of the year when all the work comes together. The big ones at the end of the year. And it's hard to find a better example of that than our game of the week. Where sixth ranked Verona travels to Janesville Craig, who have quietly had a great season. But if they want any chance at winning the Big Eight, it starts with knocking off Verona or trying to. Wildcats leading seven zip in the first quarter. Craig back to punt and Verona blocks the punt. Brell Burns recovers it too. And the Wildcats take a 14 nothing lead in the second quarter. Verona with the ball in the second. Elijah Lagamasino finds a streaking aid and Chapman has to topple a couple Janesville defenders. Defenders, but he's got a house call to make. Verona takes the 21-0 commanding lead in the second. Later in the second, as Lagamasino again finds Trey Poteet, and all I gotta say is good luck catching him. You might just catch him on national television in a few years. The Wildcats score and they get the win. 41-6, the final, and the Verona wins the big eight. Staying in the Big Eight, where Middleton hosted Madison West, Gabe Passini and the Cardinals have lost just one game all year, but the Regents hit the road, looking to knock off one of Dane County's top dogs. Second quarter, Middleton leads 23-zip, West with the ball, Michael Sumian lets it rip and links up with his man, Rodney Gavins Jr., who reels it in. The Regents are in the red zone. West just trying to put some points on the board, and they do. It's Ian Ladd who splits the uprights, 23-3 Middleton. And and then the Cardinals trying to add to that lead. Gabe Passini drops back, fires a deep ball, and he finds Troy Teff for 25 yards. Middleton would move the sticks. Later in the drive, Passini with time, scans and throws a torpedo to Teff. Cardinals score again. They'd win it easily. 50 to 3, the final. Elsewhere in the Big Eight, Janesville Parker brought it all tonight. They'd get a dominating win over Madison East, 51 to zip. And how about Memorial this season? They're having a great year. They keep their winning ways alive with a 49-8 victory over La Follette. After a sour start, Stoughton has salvaged their season, winning three of their last four. But tonight they hosted Mount Hora Barneveld and the undefeated Eagles, led by Casey Helgeson, are in the top eight in the entire state in passing yards and touchdowns. Mount Horeb quick to score early. Trenton Owens runs right through the defense untouched for his first touchdown of the night, bringing them to a 6-0 lead. Stoughton wasn't letting that lead last long, though. Drew Viney looking around, nothing to do, so he'll do it himself. Keeps the ball and finds the end zone. Stoughton now up by just one singular point. But MHB, they'd give it to the man who can get it done. Trenton Owens runs right where he belongs, right into the end zone. And MHB stays undefeated with a narrow 14-13 lead. In the Badger Conference, DeForest, how about those Norskis? They pull off the upset over Sun Prairie West with a 28-14 win. And Wanakee continued to unlock their offense. They'd run away with a win against Milton 49-6 to stay perfect on the year. What more can you say about Lodi? At 8-0, the Blue Devils are ranked as Division IV's fourth best team, make that their second best team. Mason Lane has been right, downright dynamic this season. New Glarus Monticello hosted Lodi, and MGN has been stout this year, looking to put the Blue Devils on upset alert. First quarter, Lane drops back with a pump fake that got more than just the defense. Finds Jace Kalinski with the deep ball, wide open for a touchdown. The pass would make it a Blue Devils 7-0 lead. Later in the first quarter, Lodi's Kyler Clemens takes the handoff, and he finds the gap to get into the end zone. Blue Devils keep cruising. They take the 14-zip lead. Second quarter at the goal line, Lane calls his own number. A QB sneak into the end zone, and the Blue Devils brought their A game tonight. Lodi cruises to a 49-7 win. And we finish in Belleville, where the 2-5 and five Tigers hosted the 4th-ranked Darlington Redbirds. And let me tell you, those Redbirds have been flying high this year. Darlington putting their 6-1 and one record on the line in Belleville. The Redbirds leading big in the second quarter, and Connor Larson bulldozes his way into the end zone. That would make it, get this, 41-0 Darlington. Later in the second, Belleville back to pass, and it's Reagan Jackson who snipes it out of the sky. Darlington took a 44 lead and make that a 44 0 lead into half. And then in the fourth quarter, the Redbirds just trying to keep running it up. It's Zeke Zuberbowler who reaches the promised land. Darlington wins it 58 0, the final.